Well, I think the relationship between the biopharmaceutical industry and the patients group is changing and changing rapidly and, and much for the better. The old model was uh, the companies uh, think they have a good idea about how to make a medicine. They do clinical trials, they take it to the FDA, and then the FDA has its own ideas about safety and efficacy. And if the patient gets to say anything in the process, maybe it's for a very sh a little bit in a very short period of time. Now, what we want to do is say to the patient from the beginning of the process, what do you want? What would make you feel better? What risks are you willing to take? For what benefits? How does this medicine feel when you take it? And then we want the, 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 the reviewers at the FDA to be guided by that so that instead of sort of a paternalistic approach, we'll tell you, patients, what's good for you. It's the other way around. Patients will tell us what they want and how much risk they're going to take. I think they, that we make that happen by collecting a lot of information. So it doesn't do us any good to say that Jim Jones or Mary Smith wants this or that. We really have to figure out a way to systematically create a science of collecting large amounts of data from large numbers of patients per disease and figure out how to not find a, a, an average or a medium, but how to, how to bring all of that data, that qualitative data, into the system. The, the typical way legislation is done is the party in power develops a bill in a corner somewhere, brings it out, the other party starts screaming, they fight like cats and dogs and nothing happens watching that for a very long time. I've served in Congress for 12 years, I've been there, done that. But Fred Upton, who's the chairman of the Energy and Commerce Committee, said, I'm going, I only have two more years left in this role. I'm going to do something constructive. So he said, I'm not going to rush to judgment. I want everybody around the table, Republicans, Democrats, doctors, patients, drug developers, insurers, NIH, FDA, tell us what you think we need to do to accelerate the discovery, the development, and the delivery of drugs. And that's what's been going on. And so, after, and he's taken a year to do that. He said, I want it to be entirely bipartisan, no, you know, rancor, uh, if we can avoid it. Let's all get on the same page for the same purpose and do something for patients. And I think, I think it's going to succeed. The patient community is the most credible voice in the political process. Um, you know, I like to believe, and I do believe, that the companies really want to make drugs because they want to help people to live longer and, and happier lives. Um, but we have to do it in an economic world in which we have to make a profit. And when you're a profit-making industry, you're a special interest, and you go to talk to Congress, they look at you that way, and you're with a certain amount of and probably appropriate skepticism. When the patient walks up and says, or the, the loved one of a patient walks up to a congressperson and says, I need this medicine, we need this medicine, this is the policy that's going to make that medicine uh, come to fruition, we need your help, it has much more credibility and gets better results. The patient community needs to uh, be part of the dialogue. The patient, has to, the patient community has to understand industry, has to understand insurers, understand doctors and hospitals so we all have to understand each other so we're not the you know the Tower of Babel all speaking different languages right we have to we have to have enough mutual understanding and then patient organizations I think need to take that that that, that mutual understanding to their policymakers and and, and, and speak with with, with certainty uh, with clarity and with a, a strong uh, foundation of knowledge.